I was living in Sarajevo from 1984. My intention was to travel for about three months before coming back home. However, that three months turned into 10 years. The country of Bosnia is full of resources, natural resources. It is an absolutely beautiful country. Sarajevo is based in a valley with uh, mountains all around it. Hence, I suppose that's why Sarajevo was famous partly also for its 1984 Winter Olympics. In 1992, the Bosnian War broke out. We were completely surrounded by tanks and by Serbian um, army and militia. There were snipers all around the city, so it was very dangerous for people to walk. There, there really wasn't a place where they couldn't see you. On many major intersections in, in the city, there, there would be containers or some sort of barriers lifted where people could stop um, and, you know, prepare themselves. And we very quickly found out that, you know, the first person that would run across that intersection was usually safe because they'd surprised the sniper. The second person was usually safe as well because by this time the sniper was trying to get an aim. But it was the third person that usually then suffered and was hit by the sniper. So very quickly we learned, you know, count or make sure that you somehow ran across without it being in a rhythm that, that a sniper could, could follow. People that were in Sarajevo had great difficulty um, getting any sort of food. Um, food was either obtained through the black market or we had to actually wait for humanitarian aid. And this also depended if the airport was being shelled. We were left without electricity, without gas and without water. So in order to get any water, we would have to go to some of the um, public wells, which was extremely dangerous because we often had to, you know, carry our canisters or any sort of utensils that we could put water in under sniper fire and save enough water. So I filled a whole bathtub. All of a sudden I felt the whole house shaking and there was about, I think that day, 6,000 shells had fallen on the city. Due to the um, shelling, the bathtub plug had, had unplugged, I guess, and all the water that I had collected was, was gone. We got very good at learning how to shower with only using one litre of water each. When you're involved in a catastrophe of any sort, whether it's man-made or, or natural, and involves more people, then there's a camaraderie, there's, there's this thing where, you know, there's a lot of people that are in the same situation, we understand each other, we don't have to explain how we're feeling or what our needs are, we support one another and we certainly had a lot of that in Sarajevo. You know, yet when you go through a personal tragedy, whether it's the death of a loved one or, you know, you've been involved in a car accident, it's you, you're, you're there alone. And there aren't necessarily people that know exactly what you're going through. It is easier to survive something when a whole lot of other people are, are going through the same thing as you. As far as the war, I don't think it has ended. And I don't think that um, people will be living in prosperity at any time soon, unfortunately.